Hi, um, welcome to um, Rygate Fort today. What? Welcome to Rygate Fort. <laughs> there we go, another intro. Keep that one in because everybody loves me acting like a douche. Welcome to Rygate Fort Mobilisation Centre. Um, the Mobilisation Centre was activated in the 1800s. Uh, the idea was that it was going to be a support, one of um, 13 mobilisation centres that was straddling the south southeast of London as, a, as the final defence before London itself. Mobilisation centres were typically kind of like these, well you'll see that they're sort of heavily built sort of structures which would have contained uh, army arm, armaments and ammunition etc etc, mostly manned by volunteers uh, due to a last ditch attempt should we have been invaded. Now our biggest invasion at the time or our biggest threat should I say was France. Um, it got recycled in World War II so there we go that's a brief history. I think I've covered it. Have I covered it? Yeah stop laughing it's not funny. Right let's go in. Chicken! <laughs> You can talk now, they've done. So as you can see, they've got ditches around here. Um, <laughs> I said that really stupidly. There were ditches, so four to five ditches. And um, yeah, they were, they, the idea was that they, they were... The idea was that they were used uh, as forts as well, potentially, um, dual purpose really, because although their primary use was to actually store ammunition and stuff like that, they would have been used as a form of defense. Hence why they built them all in a network. So should there have been any problems, they would have rushed in. They would have got their armaments and stuff like that and tried to defend this almost as a sort of heavily fortified trenching network. So, come on. careful. So unlike um, Box Hill Mobilisation Centre, for example, this one's more heavily fortified. Um, it's got more, it's got more um, stuff <laughs> going for it. Um, but you'll see. Come on, let's go. So yeah, the tool store. It's pretty self-evident, really, isn't it? These are national heritage. They are. Um, we obviously we can national trust. Sorry, national heritage. National trust. Get it right then. Quite nice actually these these are sort of preserved I mean like you know that they are here for us to sort of be looked at you know what I mean and it's a lovely bit of history that we can actually share and we can see for ourselves all right we can't necessarily go in it but we can see it you know and it should you invite someone to come with you that you can actually be a part of it you can see this you can witness it it's lovely you know so yeah look the magazine which we sort of said for obviously our ammunition stores that's why obviously the building is like very very heavily lined should it have gone up okay
Now all of these um, mobilisations, they're quite high up, you'll see in a minute when we go, you'll see that it, they are straddling the North Downs, so they are, the North Downs are almost like the natural buffer point for us to sort of like have a look at really. Um, this, these will look familiar to a lot of you if you've ever been to Box Hill, um, if you've ever been to Box Hill uh, mobilisation centre, because these chimneys, these stacked chimneys, um, let's have a look. So these, if you've been to Box Hill, you'll see these and you'll be like, oh, okay, yeah, because I've seen this, because I've seen a sort of smaller version of this. Again, all for ammunition storage. Because that's basically what it was. It's quite, um, I think what, what, what I find really interesting about this place is that we, we as a nation, our last true invasion or threat of invasion was obviously uh, the Germans Operation Sea Line and obviously due to terrorism and everything else, our, um, <laughs> our landscape of how we conduct military operations has changed a lot more than ever. You know, we, you know, it's, <laughs> there's, you know it, the chance of us ever really having anything on this scale ever again in terms of the threat of invasion is probably extremely rare unless we get overtaken by a zombie you know and then a place like this would be essential <laughs> um, but in all seriousness though I think it really highlights our worry as a nation that we had to build stuff like this can you imagine the investment and the money that it would have cost us to do this knowing the sheer fact that we were actually quite you know this was real this was a real threat now I've said this before in many a World War II um, location when people seem to forget the necessity of why when we explore these great underground shelters and stuff we sort of think oh yeah well they're amazing to explore but actually there was a true message behind it there was a true threat mobilization centers are another great example of that you know these were here for a reason because we were scared of invasion you know so that's that's really how that's the way I see it anyway you know, and I know that I don't really sort of express my true historical opinions on as much as probably I ought to, really. But that's the way I feel it. I feel that when I come here, I'm looking at something that was actually built for a purpose because we were scared of threat and invasion. So let's let's go and um, you know. Obviously, as you can see, this is. The only thing I shouldn't really do is talk behind the camera. Oh, look, here we go. Yeah, this is good. Let's get the view of uh, our wonderful. And you can clearly see the earthworks around here. You know, that have given the, you know, like I said, this would have been one of the lines of defence, you know. Our invaders would have come from over there. And, yeah, it's just incredible to sort of think of it, really, isn't it? So, there's our other bit of earthworking emplacement. Probably would have held some barracks as well on this part, you know, for obviously soldiers and that lot to sort of stayed here. And So, yeah, there we go. We've pretty much documented, haven't we, really? Should we say that again? Thank you as always for watching.